Hi, and welcome to Chasing the Gypsy Moon. Today, I'm gonna to take you guys to the O'Neill Campground in Orange County, California. Uh, it's a beautiful campground. It looks like the forest. It's really, really pretty. And it also has a day use, so you can go there for the day if you don't wanna go camping. I'll show you guys around and uh, show you what our camp look like. Let's go. Hi, so we're here at the Tucker Wildlife Sanctuary and we're gonna go check out the birds and then we'll head over to O'Neill Park. Well, unfortunately it's closed, so we're gonna go ahead and just head over to the park. O'Neill Regional Park is about 4,500 acres that are situated in the beautiful Tribuco and Live Oak Canyons. The park is heavily wooded with coast live oak and sycamore trees, and the hillsides surrounding the park are filled with cacti, wild buckwheat, sagebrush, and chaparral of scrub oak, buckhorn, and Monterey mahogany. Tribuco and Hickory Creeks also meander through the park, flowing in the winter and early spring, but they're usually dry in the summer and fall. The park serves both as overnight camping and day use picnic facility. The picnic area is very in size and they're available on a first come first serve basis or you can make a reservation. They have barbecues and picnic tables uh, throughout the park. There is more than 23 miles of scenic trails that can be explored by foot, bicycle or horseback. They have other day use activities that include like horseshoes pits two large community turf areas and children's playgrounds. The campground itself has 79 sites varying in size to accommodate RVs or tent camping for up to eight people per site. Reservations for individual sites have to be made online or by phone. The park offers eight large group campsites for parties up to 17 or more and five equestrian campsites, which are equipped with horse corrals, barbecues, and fire pits. The place is absolutely gorgeous. It has amenities like an amphitheater, bike trails, camping, conference rooms. Dogs are permitted as long as they're on a leash. There's a dump station there. They have equestrian trails, hiking trails, horseshoe pits, interpretive programs, uh, picnic areas, beautiful clean restrooms, playgrounds, RV camping. There's really pretty scenic overlooks. And most importantly, showers. <laughs> The drive up there, as you can see, is absolutely fabulous. I love all the trees and these like tree tunnels that you go through. It's my favorite drive in all of Orange County. I used to come up here a lot uh, riding my Harley. I would love to ride through here. It's so tranquil and pretty. It's a favorite spot for motorcyclists. So while we're driving, I'll give you a brief history of the area. In 1769, Gaspar de Portola led a Spanish expedition into what is now Orange County and camped in the area near present-day O'Neill Regional Park. While camping, one of his soldiers lost his tribuco, or musket, the most valuable possession of any soldier. To mark the loss, the nearby creek was named Tribuco. The name Tribuco has been associated with the creek that runs through the park and the surrounding area ever since. The land that compromises O'Neill Regional Park today was part of Rancho Tribuco, a Mexican land grant of the 1840s. Originally controlled by Juan Foster, Rancho Tribuco was acquired by Irish immigrants Richard O'Neill Sr. and James Flood in 1882 and became part of the larger O'Neill Ranch. In 1948, the O'Neill family donated 278 acres of Tribuco Canyon to the Orange County to establish the county's second regional park. An additional 120 acres were donated in 1963. Subsequent purchases and dedications, including a dedication of more than 400 acres in 2011 by Rancho Mission Viejo, the successor of the O'Neill Ranch, have resulted in the park's growth of nearly 4,000 acres. So this is the campground area right here. And you can camp close to the creek, which are the campsites in the back, which is the campsite I always get because I love to hear running water. But I'll briefly uh, give you a little tour of the campsites and then we'll go and check out the park side of it. It's really nice to come here in early spring because you see mule deer 
and you see beautiful wildflowers and sage. So it, it makes it really pretty. Um, dogs are welcome here. I think I mentioned that in the camping areas and the day use area and on the Mesa Trail, but you have to keep them leashed at all times. They're not permitted everywhere because, well, dogs mark their territory and it signals native animals that there's a predator in the area which affects their feeding and even breeding patterns. So they ask us to please follow the rules as far as dogs in just staying in the campground area or in the areas that they're permitted in. They also have horses, that uh, equestrian trails, I should say. So you can ride your horse in the park here, or you can also camp with them. Um, one thing I really like about this place is they have an interpretive center and it gives you an opportunity to see the nature up close they have exhibits that include like a bobcat, mountain lion, fox, hawk, rattlesnakes. Um, there's squirrels here. It's a great place for kids and adults alike to learn about the animals and plants that are indigenous of this area. Um, they also have at nighttime, they'll have a campfire with the, with the ranger and he tells like stories for the kids. So that's also really cool too. Um, this is just a super cool place to go camping because there's so many different things to do and see and really, really fun. Um, the ranger recommends that you uh, hike up to Vista Point. It's an elevation of uh, 1,492 feet at the peak and it gives you a beautiful 360 degree view of Orange County. You can even see as far as Catalina and Palos Verdes. It makes for an excellent destination point for um, many of their trails. One other thing I forgot to mention is that you can also schedule a guided hike here. So you'll see the outdoors like you've never seen it before. Like for instance, they'll tell you, did you know where you're standing? Native Americans once ground acorns here. And they, they teach you so much about the area, the rocks, the plants, it's super interesting. And they even suggest a different way of doing s'mores. So I'll tell you the little secret. So a variation to the, to the traditional s'more is try using a chocolate peanut butter cup instead of a plain chocolate bar. <laughs> Okay, so this is the tail end of the campsite area. And as you can see, there's plenty of trees for shade. Um, if you're a person who likes total privacy, this is not the place for you. This place is always crowded. It's never a slow season. Here's one of the playgrounds for the kids. The interpretive center is right behind that. They have super clean bathrooms here and hot showers very educational as you can see here they show you all the different footprints of the different animals and here's a squirrel that i swear was actually posing for pictures no matter where i went he would pose for the picture how cute is that <laughs> there's signs all throughout the park telling you what kinds of plants there are there there is a tree here that i'm going to show you in a bit that's 250 years old I was so glad I got this little papoose thing for my dog so I could hike around with her because poor thing has such a hard time. As you can see, there's all kinds of signs that tell you about the birds, the animals and everything in the area, some little history behind them. So it's really fun for children too. This is the interpretive center. They even have at the interpretive center just outside of it, there is a little, it looks like a mailbox, but when you look inside, you can open it up and there are books in there for kids. Look at my dog, just chilling like a villain. <laughs> this is the 
So I'm gonna drive you into more of the park area and show you more of it. This place is gigantic. <laughs> so peaceful. I wish I could live in the park. It is that beautiful here. <laughs> so I'm taking you up to more of the top of the hill, but there are so many trails here. And every time I come here, I find or see something new. They have a trail here called Story Time, And it's great for kids because you have to keep hiking to keep finishing the story off so every so many feet it's like turning the page of a book and it goes on to keep telling the story until you get to the end of the hike so this place is just really one of my favorite parks i've ever been to and it's not that far from town but you feel like you're a hundred miles away. It's, it's really, really nice. So anyway, the road we're driving up here um, actually takes you close to that story time trail I was telling you about, but there's also a scenic overlook. So once we get to that, I will get out of the car and uh, grab the dogs and take you for a little walk so you can kind of see that. You can overlook the park and you can see the little creek running through it at the bottom. So here's the little parking space. See that sign up ahead? That's one of the story time. Um, I don't know what to call it. Pictures? <laughs> so anyway, this is the trail that you um, walk down to get to the scenic overlook. I'm here with Pixie and her little papoose thing that she just loves so that she can go for little hikes with me. And here's another one of those pages of the story. So anyway, if you walk over here, I will take my camera and look over for you. But look at that beautiful view. And then down below there is the creek. It's kind of hard to see because the shrubbery and stuff is covering it. There's so many wildflowers growing right now too because of all the rain we had. And then you look up and see chemtrails. Ugh. They have the most unusual and really old trees here. The sycamores and the oaks are super old. I'm going to show you next um, a tree that's 250 years old. We're going to drive through the creek here. Ooh, this is kind of fun. <laughs> So it might look deep. It's not really deep. I wouldn't go through it if I thought that uh, it was that deep. They would have signs up too. So to get to the really old tree, um, we ended up finding it, but it's kind of camouflaged. There's no real signs off the road to show you where it's at. So. I ended up driving back and forth a couple of times because I couldn't figure out where it was looking at the map, but it is on the Featherly Day Use side, if you see that sign. And you have to park in a gravel lot, and then you'll see this plaque. See the plaque right there in that old like little retaining wall? And this is part of that super old tree. There's parts of it that have fallen apart it looks like maybe wood rot or something because the branches are actually hollowed out California sycamore. and then it goes it's called a cm sci feather it's been here since 
or no, the plaque has been up since August 17, 1968. That was the guy's name. Oh, some of it's actually like fallen. Let's go take a look inside. They cut that, I guess they cut. Here's some wild mushrooms growing at the bottom of this tree. Don't think I'll try them though. <laughs> These trees are just so beautiful. So I guess I'll head back to camp and uh, meet up with my grandkids. They're gonna meet up with me there. They built a little heart rock. How cute is that? So here's all our tents. And my grandson's at the creek standing on a log. And of course we had to take some video of some animal prints. We had a great time here. It was a little cold at night, but it was really, really nice during the day. The sunset was magnificent. Look at those colors. Just incredible. So I guess I'm gonna make some dinner and settle in for the evening. It'll start getting dark soon. There goes the sun. Well, good night. Here it is the next day. We're headed home. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so when I put up my next video, you'll get notified. Thank you so much as always, and I greatly appreciate you. And I will see you in the next video.